today we've got a nice problem from the 2004 Uzbekistan Math Olympiad. And there are a couple of things I like about this problem. One, it involves my favorite function, the floor function. And another thing is that it calls back to a previous video I did, which I liked quite a bit. So let's look at the problem first and then we'll detail this previous video a little bit before we jump into the solution. So our goal is to find all real numbers x such that the floor of the square root of x plus the square root of x plus 1 plus the floor of the square root of 4x plus 2 is equal to 18. And that previous video I mentioned is about Ramanujan's 723rd problem. So this video is from about a year and a half or two years ago. And in that video, we showed that for all natural numbers n, there's an equality between these two terms. So in other words, the floor of the square root of n plus the square root of n plus 1 is equal to the floor of the square root of 4n plus 2. And that actually provides some motivation that when we eventually get a solution, our solution will have both of these objects be equal. But we have to work our way to, towards that. Okay, so let's jump into the solution. So let's suppose that the floor of the square root of x plus the square root of x plus 1 equals the number m, and then the floor of the square root of 4x plus 2 equals the number n. We're also kind of in the background assuming that x satisfies our equation over here. So let's notice that that means that m plus n is equal to 18. But that only gives us a couple of possibilities. Actually, it's several possibilities for the values of m and n. So let's notice that we could have m equal to 0 and n equal to 18. We could have m equal to 1 and n equal to 17 working all the way down to m equal to 9, n equal to 9, and then all the way back up to m equal to 18 and n equal to 0. And that would be like a nice description of all possibilities of writing 18 as the sum of two non-negative integers. So this would be related a little bit to integer partitions, but here we're allowing a part which is equal to zero. Okay, so like I said, those are all the possibilities of m and n, given that we want these to add up to 18. And also, given this Ramanujan's 723rd problem, which you definitely don't need to solve the given problem, we would expect that this case when m equals 9 and n equals 9 is potentially the only solution. Or maybe that's a solution along with a couple of the solutions right around it. Okay, so let's play around with this setup right here and see if we can reduce this list over here a little bit. Notice there are 19 entries on this list. That's quite a few. That's more than we would really want to check. Okay, so let's get to it. So what I'd like to first start by doing is taking this floor of the square root of 4x plus 2 equals n and get rid of the floor function. So maybe I'll put like an orange dot next to this to show that we're doing our calculation related to that orange dot. So if we remove the floor, we have the square root of 4x plus 2 is bigger than or equal to n, but it is strictly less than n plus 1. That's in fact just the definition of the floor function. It's like an elevator downstairs to the closest integer if you're not already at an integer. But now we can square all parts of this inequality, and that leaves us with n squared is less than or equal to 4x plus 2, which is less than n plus 1 squared. And now let's hang on to that a little bit while we go and look at this first equation. And so by the first equation, I mean this one exhibited by the floor of 
the square root of x plus the square root of x plus one equals m. So that's the same thing as having m less than or equal to the square root of x plus the square root of x plus one, which is strictly less than m plus one. Now from here, we can square all portions of this inequality, leaving us with m squared is less than or equal to 2x plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of x times x plus 1 is less than m plus 1 quantity squared. So this bit on the inside I get from foiling out this interior right here. x times, or root x times root x is x. Root x plus one times root x plus one is x plus one. So those add up to two x plus one and this term would be the cross term. Okay, but now notice this has a two x plus one in it. This has a four x plus two in it. So we can manipulate this inequality so it also includes a four x plus two. We can do that by multiplying the whole thing by two. So that'll leave us with 2m squared is less than or equal to 4x plus 2 plus 4 times the square root of x times x plus 1, which is less than 2 times m plus 1 quantity squared. And now we have a 4x plus 2 as part of each of these inequalities. So let's notice that. So let's see if we can use that to our advantage. Maybe we'll go ahead and box this so we have it. Okay, so let's start here with n squared. So notice that n squared is less than or equal to 4x plus two by the first bit of this inequality. But now that will be strictly less than 4x plus two plus four times x times x plus one within a square root. We just added that four times the square root of x times x plus one. That definitely pushes things larger, but that itself is less than two times m plus one quantity squared. So let's see, we have n squared is now strictly less than two times m plus one squared. So let's bring that over here. So there we have it, n squared is strictly less than two times m plus one squared. But now we can do a fairly simple calculation and look at all of the possible values of m and n and see which ones satisfy this magenta boxed equation. So let's say that we're doing that by putting this arrow through this magenta box and what we end up with is a much smaller list of values of m and n. We get m is equal to seven, n is equal to 11. That's one possibility. That will satisfy this equation. m equals eight and n equals 10 also satisfies this equation. And then finally, m equals nine and n equals nine also satisfies this inequality. Okay, so now that we have that, let's maybe check each of those individually. So if the floor of the square root of x plus the square root of x plus one was m and this other term was n, we determined previously that we had the following three possibilities. m was seven, n was 11, m was eight, n was 10, or m and n are both nine. Now we're gonna work off these one at a time. So let's look at our first case when m and n are both nine. So putting these two floor equations into inequalities like we did generally on the last board, we get the following two inequalities. We have the square root of four x plus two is between nine and 10. And then we have the square root of x plus the square root of x plus one is also between nine and 10. And now let's get to calculating. So here we'll square both sides of our first inequality. That will give us 81 is less than or equal to 4x plus 2, which is in turn less than 100. So let's see, moving this 2 over, we get 79 is less than or equal to 4x, which is less than 98. 
and thus x is between 79 over 4 and 98 over 4, which is 49 over 2. Okay, good. So at least x has to live within those two bounds. Now let's go over to this other inequality and see what we get from that. So here we'll start by squaring both sides or really all three sides of this inequality. So that'll give us 81 is less than or equal to 2x plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of x times x plus 1, which is less than 100. You know, by similar calculations to what we did before. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky, but what we'll do is split this off into two inequalities. I think that's really our best bet. So let's separate these two so we don't get confused. And let's take this orange inequality and split off that. So moving some things around, we'll see that we have 80 minus 2x is less than or equal to 2 times the square root of x times x plus 1. But now we'll divide both sides by 2 since they both have multiples of 2 built into them. That gives us 40 minus x is less than or equal to the square root of x times x plus 1. And now we'll square both sides. So that'll give us x squared and then minus 80x and then plus 1600 is less than or equal to x squared plus x. Okay, but now we can move some things around. Notice that our x squared terms cancel, so that's pretty nice. And we'll see that in fact, we get something like this. 1600 is less than or equal to 79 times x. But that means that x is bigger than or equal to 1600 over 79. Okay, so that's what we get for the first part of this inequality. And now we'll play the game on this second part of our inequality as well. So let's get these separated so we don't get confused. Now we're gonna work off this other side. So let's maybe color code that in yellow. So we've got this overlined in yellow. That comes down and turns into, let's see, we'll have, <coughs> We'll have 2 times the square root of x times x plus 1 is itself less than 99 minus 2x. So something that looks like that. And now we can square both sides of this and we'll see that we have something like 4 times x squared plus 4 is less than, um, this will be 4 times x squared and then minus 4, 3, 5, 6, x, and then finally plus 9, 8, 0, 1. So that's what we get from squaring that binomial. So now some things canceled just as before. So this 4x squared and this 4x squared cancel. And then we're left with 4, 3, 5, 6, x is less than, let's see, that'll be 9, 7. But now that means that x will be less than 9, 7, 9, 7 over 4, 3, 5, 6. So we get something like that. So let's maybe put a box around this. And note that these two inequalities have to hold at the same time, these two magenta boxed inequalities. So putting those together, we get a compound inequality of 1600 over 79 is less than or equal to x, which is in turn less than 79, not, or sorry, 9797 over 4356. So something like this. And then the last thing that we have to do for this case is to smash these two together. So this one with the star and then this other one with the star that I'm putting right here. An important thing to notice is that 79 over four is less than 1600 over 79. But now that I look at that, that should really be 1600 over 81. I did a small arithmetic error there. So maybe check, did you already make a comment about this small arithmetic, arithmetic error? Well, good for you. So that means this will act as the lower bound. This is the more restrictive lower bound. 
Whereas 49 over two is smaller than this 9797 over 4356. So this is the most restrictive upper bound. So putting this all together, we'll see that X must lie between 1600 over 81 and this 49 over two. If we, st if we take the most restrictive upper and lower bounds from each of those magenta boxed inequalities. And this would be our solution set from this original setup where M is equal to nine and N is equal to nine. So it looks like, yes, we do get a solution out of this. And that solution is given by the following inequality. Now let's check maybe one other of these and then we'll leave the other one as a homework exercise. And that's gonna be M equals eight and N equals 10. And we're not gonna even go through all the details of this because they're essentially the same. Okay, so M is playing the role of the bounds of this term, whereas N is the bounds of this term. So let's use the fact that n is equal to 10 to say that 10 is less than or equal to the square root of 4x plus 2, which is less than 11. Now we can square both sides of this and we get 100 is less than or equal to 4x plus 2, which is less than 121. Then we can subtract 2 from both sides. We get 98 is less than or equal to 4x, which is less than 119. And we'll have x is between 49 over 2 and 119 over 4. So those are our bounds for this setup. So related to the square root of 4x plus 2 term. Okay, nice. Now let's look at the other one. So we'll have m is eight in this case. So we have eight is less than or equal to the square root of x plus the square root of x plus one, which is in turn less than nine. So let's work out a couple of details from this. So squaring both sides, we'll get 64 is less than or equal to two x plus one plus two times the square root of x times x plus one, which is less than 81. So let's focus on this left half of the inequality and see what we get. So moving some things over, we will have 63 minus 2x is less than or equal to 2 times the square root of x times x plus 1. Okay, but then after shuffling some things around there, which I won't do, what we'll end up with is x must be bigger than or equal to 3969 over 256. Okay, and then from the other portion of the inequality, which I'll overline in yellow, we'll see that x must be less than 1600 over 81. And that's related to similar inequality to what we saw before. Notice there's some overlap between these. So that means we get 3969 over 256 is less than or equal to X, which is in turn less than 1600 over 81. So in order to have a solution in this N equals eight, N equals 10 case, X must simultaneously satisfy these two compound inequalities. But indeed, we can check that this is impossible because notice looking at the left-hand side of this inequality, we see that X must be bigger than, well, 49 over two stepped down one step would be 48 over two, which is 24. So that says that X has to be bigger than 24. Whereas over here, we see that X has to be less than 1600 over 80, pushing this side higher, but 1600 over 80 is exactly equal to 20. So simultaneously, X is bigger than 24 and less than 20, which is impossible. So that means we get no solution for this setup. So we've got a solution for M equals nine, N equals nine, which we had on the last board. There's no solution for this M equals eight, N equals 10, and I'll leave it to you as a homework exercise to check the remaining case. So if you like this problem, maybe check out the previous one that we talked about. It should be on the screen right now, and that's a good place to stop.